Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, to everybody who's watching, if you enjoy this video or get anything out of it, I would really encourage you to click that thumbs up button down below. It doesn't cost you anything. YouTube isn't gonna spam you with emails. But best of all, it's gonna encourage the YouTube algorithm to show my videos to more people with similar interests. And the more people watching and especially commenting on my videos, the more we all learn in this fantastic hobby of building guitars. Uh, and of course, if you'd like to help support the channel financially, you can visit my eGuitar Plans uh, web store or my Highline Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below and you can purchase plans for building guitars, the tools that we use to build guitars, and you can also buy some uh, cool t-shirts. But whatever you spend is going to help support my channel because I don't offer Patreon pages or memberships or anything like that. I think that it, when you uh, spend a little bit of money to support my channel, you should be getting something uh, in return that's of interest to you. And since you're here watching videos about guitar building, why not buy some plans for building guitars? Even if you don't make the guitars, your uh, contribution is gonna help support this channel so I can continue making more videos about building guitars as well as reviewing tools that we use to build guitars. So what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video is I'm gonna continue with the uh, construction of my six string multi-scale guitar build that I'm working on. And in the last episode, I made the fretboard, which means in this episode, I'm gonna make the neck. So, uh, Let's jump onto the CNC machine and get started. Um, oh, one other thing. You'll notice as you're watching this video, some of the segments I have sped up to 400%, and that's just so you don't have to sit through watching me do the setup work. But most of the CNC cutting is done at actual speed, so you'll get an idea about how that goes. So let's get started. The first thing I've got to do is position the blank on my CNC machine. And I've talked about this before, but my method is pretty simple. I simply mark the center of each edge, and then I use those marks to position the blank relative to lines which I have engraved in the wasteboard of my CNC machine. I have a line at the very center that follows the uh, x-axis, and then another one that follows the y-axis. So by lining up those marks, I know exactly where in the workspace the blank is positioned. So from there I can then clamp down the workpiece, the, the blank, and make sure that it is firmly clamped to the workboard. Now because of the aggressive uh, rough cutting uh, strategy that I follow, I find it's useful not only to, to use uh, clamps to hold it down, but I also use clamps around the perimeter to keep the blank from shifting under the forces of high-speed CNC cutting. Of course, I know exactly where the blank is positioned on the wasteboard, but the CNC machine's controller doesn't know. So to help educate it where that blank is located, I have to first home the spindle. And I'll home it to the lower left corner where limit switches are tripped and that informs the controller exactly where the spindle is positioned. So from there I can jog the spindle over to the XY start position. Then I'll install the bit that I'm going to use and I'll home that bit in order to tell the machine where the Z axis home position is. Now the first cutting operation is going to be for the truss rod. So once I have uh, the program loaded I can start cutting the uh, truss rod slot, which only takes about a minute and a minute and a half to cut that slot. The next carving operation is going to be the front of the headstock. And I like to probe the bed even though it really isn't necessary since I didn't swap bits, but I just like to do that as a good habit. Probing the bed is critically important to making sure that your depth of cut is always going to be accurate. But from here I can carve just that front face and this will involve two carving operations. The first which you see here is the rough cutting operation which removes most of the wood. That's followed by a finishing pass which is 
um, just a fine skimming of the surface in order to get the rough cut stair steps removed and that surface nice and smooth. After I've finished uh, cutting that front of the headstock, I can then flip the blank over and I'll use those lines that I marked on the sides of the blank and line those up with the engraved lines on the wasteboard so that I know that the carving operations I'm going to do on the back of the neck are going to register and line up perfectly with what I just did on the front side of the neck. The carving operation on the back of the guitar neck is going to require a longer reach bit. So I'm going to be using a two flute spiral upcut bit. It's a quarter inch in diameter, but it has a cutting length of about two inches. And that's plenty to cut through this one and a half inch thick blank. So of course, since I'm swapping bits, I've got to probe the bit again to get the z-axis position correct. And then I'm ready to start carving the back. And this is actually going to involve a two pass cutting operation. The first pass is a rough cut and that's going to hog out most of the wood just like I did on the front of the headstock face. But this is going to be the entire back of the neck including the heel as well as the headstock and the shaft in between. Now at this stage, all the cutting operations on the CNC for making this neck are complete. So I can move the spindle out of the way and remove all the clamps so that I can lift the blank off the wasteboard. And you'll notice that the neck is still attached to the blank. And that's because I use tabs to hold the neck in place while it's being cut on the CNC machine. That's a safety measure. So once the carving operations are done, I'll take it over to my bandsaw and I'll just make quick work of cutting those tabs to liberate the neck from the blank itself. I always get a kick out of folks who claim that using a CNC machine is cheating because it's push button guitar building. They don't realize just how much handwork goes into making a guitar even though it's the parts have been cut on the CNC machine. Here for example I'm removing the tabs from the neck and the fretboard using sandpaper and my uh, Japanese Iwasaka files. Alright guys that's as far as I'm going to get in this episode. Um, I'm ready to glue the fretboard down to the neck. However before I can do that I, uh, I had to order a truss rod because I thought I had some truss rods uh, on my shelf uh, in my shop but as it turns out I've used the last one up so I had to order a new one and I'm just going to be waiting for that to get here. It should be here in a few days and then I can install it and glue on the fretboard. Now one thing you may have noticed is I didn't route slots for carbon fiber reinforcement. And I know some of you are going to be wondering, you know, why I didn't do that? Because I've done that on guitar necks in the past. And the reason is, it isn't always necessary. I use carbon fiber reinforcement if I'm suspicious of the wood that I'm going to be using. Uh, I might feel like it's not going to be strong enough to withstand uh, string tension. So in those cases, I'll use carbon fiber reinforcement rods. But in the case of this particular neck, it's incredibly straight grain maple. It's the eastern hard maple species. So it's far less susceptible to uh, warpage and bending and that sort of thing under string tension. So I didn't feel it was necessary to add the carbon fiber reinforcement rods. 
Uh, if it had been a piece of mahogany or soft maple, then I probably would have used the carbon fiber reinforcement rod. So uh, didn't need it for this one. So um, be sure to uh, tune in for the next episode as I prepare to glue this fretboard down to the neck. And I'll show you that whole process and explain it in detail. So until that next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, click the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, visit eGuitar Plans uh, website uh, or the Highline Guitars merch store, and I hope you'll be back for uh, the next episode in this uh, thrilling and exciting six-string multi-scale guitar build. <laughs>